guys. Tracy at the Rhapsody Art Barn, three o'clock on a Sunday. Here I am. So today, this week I've been working on, working on, working on lots of projects. And today I am going to finish up some of my patina paint pieces. Say that 10 times fast. Um, and I started them so you will be able to see what the patina will look like, kind of, and then I make them even rustier and crustier and better the second round. So usually when I do patina paint, I do a couple rounds because I like them really, really crusty and fun. So um, if you have questions on the process, this is the second half of the process, but it's the same as the first half. So it just gives you the ability to look at what I've done prior done because it takes overnight to dry and to actually get that patina going. Um, so patina paint is really cool. It is a paint. You paint it on just like regular paint, but it is a two-step process and the paint itself has metal inside the paint and that is what when activated causes the faux finish, the rust. And it's not a faux finish because it's actually rusting the metal inside the paint. So it is rust. So that one is the iron. You use that with a green patina spray and that will activate it and create this rust. And the iron itself takes overnight to activate and turn this color and crust up like it is. Okay, so you won't see that as much until the next day. That's just the way it is. The blue spray and the bronze creates this color and it will show up right away a little more than the iron will, but it takes overnight to get that real nice crusty. Hey Judith, thanks for popping on. I'm doing your uh, patina, patina favorite. Here is the copper with the green spray. So these two together, I use the green spray. And then this one was made using the blue spray. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna crust some more. And so this blue patina spray can also activate the copper and make it a little more blue. But, you know, really, if you want a blue color, you're going to want to use the bronze. This will not react with the blue spray at all. So if you want two colors and you want to make sure that you're getting an activation, these two colors, the iron and the copper with the green spray, will create these two colors or these two colors. Okay, so this is one coat of the patina activated with the green spray and it gives a rusty crusty and you can see it's just a regular metal i think this was painted kind of like a faux green and black and i'm iron crusting it out it's got this tall finial i just thought it was cool and i want it to look rusty crusty farmhouse so I'm gonna actually add more, and I'm gonna add some of the bronze this time with the blue to this. Now, <clears throat> this is the same. I used just the green spray, and this is just an old brass lamp, and you can still see the brass if you look up close in the light through it. It's not gonna have the brass on it after I'm done today. So that's what I've been working on, and that is the patina paint, and I'll just show you the process. I'm gonna go through it today. And a couple things. First off, safety first, make sure you put down, um, I, I save all these wrappers so that I have something to put underneath, and they're all small wrappers. Hold on, I need a bigger one. Really, really, did I grab any bigger one? I grabbed one. This one and I'm gonna stick it underneath my project and I'm gonna tilt you down we're gonna do the lamp because I think you can see the lamp better than that big finial is too tall and I have you down there we go there we go let's see make sure you can see as much as possible okay so I have it on a lazy Susan that I'm put plastic 
on top of and under and like I said safety first so I usually put some gloves on for this product this is one of the few products that Dixie Belle has that will have an odor and it's a chemical base so I do use um, gloves for this most things are no VOCs and water based but this one is a little more chemical because it's got the rusting we're, we're oxidizing things right is that the word, right word I could be wrong people are dinging me sorry okay so before you start a piece of metal this was actual metal it is recommended that you use prime start and that will keep it from corroding all the way through the metal that is a personal preference but here is the prime start we're already past that step we're now on to the second coat of of the uh, paint so today I've already got the iron on here pretty good it looks pretty irony I don't know I might add a little bit more iron I'm not sure but I'm gonna use the bronze my containers look at how nice and neat this is here's the bronze paint here's my bronze <laughs> reality right internet reality so my bronze paint is well used. So I'm gonna use up what I have of the bronze. I'm also going to be, I'm probably gonna do all three, just to be fair. And then I'll probably spray it with both. And it is probably at the end of its life, so I'm probably gonna have to open up a new one. It is metal and yucky. I think I'm gonna open up a new one. Okay, we're gonna use the nice one. Then I'm also gonna, I'll show you. There's the iron one. I'm gonna open them all up. You don't use a mask when you spray. Yeah, typically I do use a mask when I add the spray or I spray it outside. Are we gonna get, yeah, typically I do. I even have a little mask next to me. But you know, today for the demo, look at, look at, I am that good, Judith, look, look. Um, We'll see, I don't know. And then I'm gonna get my copper open. Oh my goodness, maybe. Oh, did I get some on my face? I think I just did. Okay, there's the copper. And actually you can use this as a paint. It is actual a true copper color. It's very beautiful. And let me open my bronze, and then we're gonna use stir sticks. Stir them up because that is how you get all the goody metal goodness from the bottom to the top is really stir them up. So be sure every time you're using this, you're stirring, stirring them up really well. Sorry, I didn't know I was going to have to open this right away. Good thing I was wearing my gloves, huh? I just got it everywhere. I can't get the top off. Let go. I'm a seasoned painter, you know. <laughs> I'm making such a mess here. <sighs> okay. But it's got all that paint stuff in there and I don't want the metal to be... There we go. Okay. I'm just right into the trash with that guy. You know what? I already made a huge mess. It's already all over my hands. Start over, do over. <laughs> okay. okay, pretend that never happened. Rewind, right? Can't open a thing of paint. Okay. And you really should wear a... a... What am I doing? <laughs> I can't read your comments. I need to see these. These are cracking me up. Oh, there we go. I'm real. I am real. Patina <laughs> for you always a mess. It is a mess. Okay, so you can see as I'm, I don't know if you can see, but as you're stirring, you will see a swirly darker color in there. And so you can really tell that 
it needs to be stirred up constantly. I just keep my stir sticks in it or close by. And typically you wanna put them in a different container, you know, something you got to, to paint with. And once they're all stirred up, just put a little in the container. I've got a lot of projects, so if I don't use it on this one, I'll use it on the next one. So I got a little bit of the iron is gray. I got a little bit of the bronze is a bronze color. Brown, brownie bronze. And then the copper is a true copper paint, which is so pretty if you just use it on your own. And let me tell you, you can patina anything. I patina my Uggs and I wear them all the time to apply with a brush or a stir stick. You can do either. I think if it's you, wait, that's copper, but it's looking pretty brown. Um, I think you would probably do a stir stick because you like it so thick, right? But I'm going to apply with the brush today because this is my second coat. And then what you do is you try to figure out which color goes to which top and you close your lids because if you do not do that part and you spray the activator spray into your paint, it is going to activate. It's not, not good, no bueno. We don't want to activate a whole container of patina paint because then it's not good to use. Okay, so can you see me? Can you see this project? Okay, so I got three different colors. And from this point on, you have to move kind of fast because this stuff has to be sprayed when it's wet, okay? So I'm gonna get my sprayer ready, okay? I got my whole setup ready. Now I'm back to having gooey hands again. And this stuff has to be shaken all the time. Now, I don't have a ton of stuff in here. If you did have a ton of stuff in here, you could move it to a smaller bottle, but I'm actually gonna blend these two and create a blue-green solution because I quite honestly use the blue and the green all the time together. So I am creating my own solution. Once I put, and I can just save this bottle for later and use it for, you know, a, another, if I open two more, you know, another blue green solution. But you have to leave the cap on. If you have this without the sprayer, the cap on. And then every time you use the sprayer, you take it out and rinse it out because it will not work again. And I hope this one does. I do spray it out every time. I swear I go through these tops all the time. Okay, so you shake it, shake it, and then I'm gonna make sure it sprays. Yes, it does. Yay, we're good. Okay, so we're all ready. We're ready. I'm just using any old brush I got. It's water-based, you can rinse it out. I rinse it outside first in my hose into the gravel, and then I clean it out with the um, scrubby sponge, scrubby soap. I also like the DIY. I'm really liking the DIY um, brush cleaner. It's got a mesh, metal mesh in there. It's really cool. So I'm liking that too. Okay, so I'm stirring this as I go. Ready? Once I put it on, it's gotta be wet, remember? So you're chunk dabbing, chunk dabbing, lots and lots of chunks. And I'm putting this kind of where I've already put the brown before and it's creating another layer. If you want it even chunkier, if you want it to be um, crusting off your piece, you add some sea spray or salt wash into the paint. And that will give you those big, thick, crusty flakes. So that's fun too. I'm not doing that on this. I don't think I did it on the first one either, but I'm really putting a lot of this iron on and I'm trying to cover kind of where I've already covered before. 
And because I put this into a different container to put it on, I can go back in with the same brush and go to the next color. It is gonna mix with the next color, but you know, again, it doesn't really matter too much because it's all gonna drip together in a way anyway. Hope you can see this, you guys. I can pull you down even more if I need to, but I'm basically just going over those spots that I've already gone where man has gone before. Okay, and again, doesn't really matter if I go exactly over it. You just have to make sure that it stays wet. So if I need to, I have to come back with more paint and make it wet before I spray it. Okay, now I'm moving on to the bronze. This is a color I hadn't added before, so I'm kind of just dabbing wherever I think it needs it. And it's gonna turn blue, blue-green, because I put the blue and the green solution together, but it tends to take on the blue hue of the blue spray. These Lazy Susans are really handy because, quite frankly, where else are you going to have a workspace that you can turn everything around so easily on? And I'm just making it like it was dripping down the side of the piece. Just kind of like taking on its little mind of its own. Now the copper is gooier, and I'm putting that where the green was. So basically I'm covering everything that was done before. <laughs> but it's going to be thicker and look better once it's sprayed. And sometimes when you get a ton of the copper green on, it'll turn a bright, bright, bright green. It's kind of fun color. Okay, let's see. Get lots of paint, make sure it's super wet. It will keep your brush strokes. You'll see the brush strokes. So I try to goo it up so that it's kind of like not a brush stroke, but a tapped on more look. And it's all pretty gooey. It's looking pretty good. Okay, once it's at this point where it's dripping, gooing goodness, Everything looks pretty wet, I hope. Now we get these out of the way if we wanna use them again. Get them all the way out of the way. Everything out of the way that is wet paint and mask up. Mask up, safety first. You'll see me like this at the barn a lot. Okay, shake, 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 shake. And I am dripping it, dripping it dripping it like really wetting this and this is a spray bottle this is not a mister bottle you guys I want this to be wet dripping down I want the drips to be really dripping I want it to be like a puddle at the bottom go the other way because I'm getting my my cord you can tape off your cord if you're so fancy I'm not that fancy go back in and clean it up and then it turns into this beautiful blue green mess and it will activate and it will start getting see how it's covered now there's no bronze showing through can you hear me can you hear me okay now at this point i have another one to do but at this point you would um Make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. Open the door. And I'm going to apply heat. You can stick it out in the sun if you still have sun. I'm going to use my heat gun. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. Okay. Whew. That was a lot of work, I tell you. Okay. And I'm just going to heat this up. And then typically I take it off the plastic, put it on its own fresh piece of plastic outside if it's a nice day or any other part of the shop and just leave it overnight. 
And then when you come back the next day, it's like Christmas. I love, love, love seeing what happens. But heat does help activate this. Can you see the blue starting to form already? The blue and the green will show up pretty quickly. I mean quickly, I say quickly, but usually takes a couple hours for it to really show up. And then overnight for the iron. Patience required, you're right, Judith. But look at how fun a plain old brass lamp from, I don't know, find them at Goodwill, you find them everywhere, can turn. And you can go back in and add more um, solution and more paint, but it will not turn the paint color a color unless the patina paint is wet in the first place. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah. So I'm gonna work on the other pieces. Can you see that a little bit, how it's turning already? But when it comes out, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as modeled as this because I've done another coat and I've kind of blended them together and it actually makes it more cohesive, but it's going to be just as rusty, crusty, this one, I think I did use some sea spray because it's crunchy too. Now, can you get this with paint? Sure, you can use a paint and sea spray to get this technique, but this is a natural rusting. It, it can take anything and make it rusty. Anything that you can apply paint to, it can rust. So I often take wood pieces and make them rusty crusty and it's so fun. So big old wooden corbels that you want to make look like you know, industrial hardware, stuff like that. Really, really fun. So this is the patina paint. And like I said, I'm gonna take it off. It's little, I need to get another piece of plastic and I will be right back. Cause I wanna take it off it's little, oh, it's gonna take it with it. Wait, 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 wait. I don't want that. It's dripping. It's dripping, it's taking the plastic with it. And then I can show you a couple things that I've been working on. Let's see if I can get it into the garbage can. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I want to, I'm not done. I want to show you. Hold on. Let me get this over. Away from me. And you guys, it's not a terrible smell. Honestly, the spray to me smells like vinegar. So it's a vinegary smell. It's not terrible. But again, you don't want to sit here and suck in metal fumes. Okay. I do want to take this lid off because like I said, it's really bad. This stuff will like ruin my, my spray bottle and seconds flat. So, I want to get it all out of here as quickly as possible. And move on to my next piece. Even though I'm going to be working on this, like I said, I'm going to be working on some more when I get off. I still don't want it in my spray bottle even for that long. So, I just run a little water through it. And put the cap back on. So that's as easy as that, but it's gonna be awesome when it's done, awesome. Okay, I wanna show you guys what I worked on. I had it sitting up here a second ago. Have you guys seen the new stamps? The IOD, I'm sure you have, they're everywhere. But the IOD four pack of vintage texture stamps. How cool are these? I think I showed you last time, but I hadn't used them yet. And just to show you how easy it is to use, I had one of these little pumpkins left over and I took my chippy paint one. This is chippy paint. And I just put a little paint on it with my brayer. And then I dabbed the edge of this pumpkin. And look at how cool. It's chippy paint, you guys. There's a light color on a dark. 
and there's a dark color on the white. Is that amazing? And then, get a little more. Now that I don't have a big, huge piece up. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the little bit of crackling. Put that again for later. The crackalure. I'll show you the different textures because they're super fun. So here's the crackalure. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of, I, what did I use before? I think I used the Dixie Belle coffee bean for this. Hold on two seconds. It's an obstacle course in here. I'm gonna use the same so you can see the texture real well. It was a good, a good contrast. Okay, so all I do is I apply it to a mat. You can use a piece of plastic again, whatever. And then I spread out the paint. It's just this easy. And then I use my sprayer to put a little bit of this coffee bean brown, dark brown paint. It has an uh, uneven edge to the stamp, so it's not it's not straight across. And then I just dab it where I want it, and it creates this amazing crackle. Look at that crackle. Is that so cool? And then I also have. I showed you the chippy paint one, right? We did that one. And then I also have, I'm gonna spray this with water maybe, just so it doesn't sit there wet. Um, two other distressed, great for metal look. That looks like a distressed piece of metal. And maybe some cracked cracks on a, I don't know, board? I don't know, but I'm gonna try it. Should we try it without my hair on it? I'm just gonna do a piece of it so you can see. I wanna get a piece that has a little bit of those, here, I'm gonna do this side over here that has a little bit of those dots in it. Looks like scratched up, scratched up metal. So cool. Okay, so can you see the scratched up part down here? All crackly and scratched up. Yeah, this is so fun, you guys. And then I have one big one here. Uh, lots of scratches. This would be great on metal because it looks like scratched up metal. And I'm gonna do, look at how little paint I use. I have so much paint here. I could have done a hundred of these little things. All you need is like a dab of paint. Oh, this one's not shaking up. Shake, shake, shake. There we go. I don't know, this one might be a little bit separated. We'll try it, I think it's okay. Okay, so move my stuff out of the way. So you can see, and I'm just gonna do right here on this corner with the light color, flip this baby over. And really, you don't even need a full-on press down. Look at how cool that is. Isn't that cool? So those are the four different stamps that you can use for texture on a piece. And let me show you how I did that. Um, I think I have to tip you up for this one a little bit. I did that on this wall board I made. This was just an old canvas that had a picture on it. You can kind of see the picture behind it. So cute, thank you. So, I don't know if you can see it from there. I hope so. I can come around to you. Um, so on this board, this was an old canvas and you can kind of see the picture through it. I left the chandelier 
so you can see it behind it. And then I took Would You Bend, and of course I take all my broken pieces because Would You Bend never breaks, it just comes apart and I just stick it back together. So all of these are separate. They're one design that were separated that I had to put back together. And then the top is a pair of scrolls. And then these are molds. Of course, you can use the Would You Bend for that as well. You've seen me do that in the past. I just happened to have a mold that I thought went really well with that. And then I went around the edges with that chippy stamp and French linen paint. So I didn't want to use too dark, right? Because it's supposed to be like kind of cracked up a little bit. And I used the crackle in places, the crackalure, and I used the chippy paint on the side. And I just kind of created a weathered, and it's big, <laughs> a weathered door panel. See the weathering in there? Let's see if I can turn it this way so you can see the chippy crack. Isn't that cool? And it looks like it's made that way. Okay, so that is what I used the stamp on so far. Of course, most people are using it for their mixed media projects, just as a background. Super easy. Take a piece of wood or an old canvas or whatever you're gonna create on and put a little paint on it and then take any one of these textures and create a texture along the whole back. And that way you'll have lots of interest before you even start. Or another thing, stamping is fun is Get your paint kind of crusty dry a little bit and then stamp layers and you can actually stamp into the paint. It's really fun. Let's see, do I have a little board I can show you that real fast? I guess I could use another pumpkin. Just because I happen to have one here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you how to do that. My favorite paint to use for that technique is definitely the DIY simply because it's thicker naturally, but any chalk style paint will work. So the paint I just showed you would work too. But I do like to use the, um, I guess I guess it doesn't really matter. Does it matter? I don't know, I don't know. Let me show you, let me show you. I just don't have that much paint up here. I, I was so good, I started putting all my paints away so they wouldn't be in my way. And now I need the paint. Let's see what colors I have. I just don't want it to be too much of a contrast because then you won't be able to see. So maybe I better use the Dixie Bell paint. Okay, well, we're gonna try it. We're just gonna play my favorite thing to do anyway. So has everybody seen these? These are a great way to smudge paint on. And there's also a Dixie Belle one called a thingamajig. This is the IOD one. And literally I'm painting with the tool. And see how it's creating a little more depth already with this tool versus a paintbrush. You're already getting a thicker application, right? Now I'm gonna let that dry just for a second. Get my little, get my little dryer. I haven't pulled my craft dryer out. I need to do that because this thing is so hot. I don't want this all the way dry. I want it to just start setting up a little because this paint especially dries hard and is not reactivated once dry with the water as easily. This is called pine cone. This is a medium warmer tone, which I like for blending, especially. It's a good tone for blending. It really draws out, um, gosh, you know, I, you can use it for all different colors, blues and greens and yellows, the hues in it, it kind of, a neutral, it's a real good neutral. You use the kitchen spatula, well hey, you do you girl. <laughs> kitchen spatulas work too. I always say use what you got, right? And I'm doing a medium tone on the top of this dark tone. 
We're just playing here, you guys. We'll see what happens. I wet down my, I used these, so I wet them down and I hope it still does a good clean application. Okay, and then I'm gonna dry that for just a sec. It's, it's layering, it's not mixing. That's my point, I'm layering paint on. But I still want it to be wet. I don't want it to be all the way dry, but I want the next coat to be on top of that coat. Then we're gonna go straight into the drop cloth. Let's do that. That's the one we used before. And there's stuff all over the place. So much for my cleaning up, guys. I pull it all out again, then I clean it up. I'm trying to get this to layer on top. Might not be dry enough to do that, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna pretend it is. We're just playing. But normally you'd let it dry a little more than I just did, because right now, see, it's blending it rather than laying on top. Okay, so the point is, then you take your texture, whatever that may be. I'm gonna clean this one up so I just, uh, Rinsed it off. Get it a little drier than it is. I don't have to get all the paint off. I'm putting paint back on, but I don't want it to be wet. Okay, and then you're stamping into this somewhat dried layer. And again, I haven't done this with the Dixie Bell paint, but I don't see why it won't work. We'll see. And I'm really pushing this one. This one is different than, than the last time where I just dabbed it on. Just dab it on. This one I'm pushing down so I can really get it mushed in there. And creating, yeah, it wasn't dry enough. But you can see I'm creating that texture in the paint. And then it'll show through all the different layers. But because it wasn't dry enough, it's gooey in the center. But look at that. The still, you can see the, the texture that you're gonna create if it wasn't so wet in the center. It's a cool texture background. And then, once it's completely dry, you come back in with your transfer or your decoupage paper or whatever you're using. And once it's dry, you just put your little image on top and then you have a background that's more interesting than if you just put this on a plain background, right? So that is the, that's just another technique that you can use. Again, let it dry a little bit on its own in between and it will give you even more texture all the way through. Fun, fun stuff. So that's the new texture stamps from IOD and the patina paint. That's what I'm working with today. I'm gonna to go back to my patina paint before it all dries and I don't get to do any more. And if you have questions about any of these products or how to use them, you know where to find me. My number is on there. I text and you can PM me. Um, the farmhouse show, thank you, it is cool. The Farmhouse Show is in two weeks, you guys, less than two weeks. It starts on a Thursday, Thursday evening, Friday and Saturday, all day. And then um, if you get your ticket for Friday opening, I think you get all three days. So either way, come and see us. It'll be really fun. Um, I'm going to have some products and some stuff that I'm working on. So yay, thanks for stopping in today. Have a wonderful Sunday, and I will probably be here next week. If not, I'll try to do a video, and I'll pop on so that you guys can see. Okay, take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye.